All right, team, here is what I have going on in my mind. This right here is how the rafter is going to sit. And so it is actually planing out with the back of the post. So I'm not worried about that because I am going to be going to the side like that. However, I need to figure out what this angle is so I can cut that on my front post. Does that make sense? So I kind of figured out what I wanted and it's basically a six inch drop from the front to the back. And I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna get this angle. So I've cut this post at 50 and a half just to have it run wild. And then what I did was I laid this across here until I got level, made a mark, and then I just went up six inches. So I want the front of it to be at six inches. It's not really that much of an all, at all of an angle, so I'll just mark what it is, and then it is what it is. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to go cut this angle on this post, then cut a duplicate one just like it, and we'll put that one over there and put this one over here, and then we'll start working on our header. All right, guys, hang tight. So looking at this two by that I ripped down, I am exactly, it's five and a half, almost five and nine sixteenths right there in the middle of that. So what I want to do is find my high point on this. And I've already marked it, so right here, this is the tall point of it. So if that's going to be my long point when it's sitting up in there, yeah, it's angled up like this. So I want to pull down from here, right after five and nine sixteenths, guys, right there. Boom, that's my number right there. All right, and then we'll square that across. Just like that, this one, but I can go ahead and get the inch and a half mark. Nothing else. This thing's a speed square. I mean, I can be dead accurate, you know what I'm saying? All right. This is my inch and a half. This gets removed. And this gets removed. All right, guys, let's cut that. I'm like this, make sure if your blade starts on this side of the line or that side of the line, you stay consistent on both sides. So since I got them notched, I'm going to go ahead and go up there and set them in place, get them plumbed up, which it doesn't matter. I'll just measure the bottom and cut my header the exact same width. Now, you'll be able to see a little bit of this on the end, but most of it will be covered up by that 2x4 rafter. And then I thought I might just put something a little fancy right there to cover up that other seam. You'll see what I'm talking about. I just like to make sure everything is finished off on the ends, if you can finish it off. Don't ever leave anything raw or rough. All right, here we go. You guys know what it is with this. All right, so it looks like our header is going to be, and that's from end to end, 79, 5 16 I'm gonna go cut that, I'll be right back. Beautiful, beautiful, all right. So we just need Drive this one home. All right, you guys, so 
The way we've been putting this together has not been your conventional way of doing framing. I, I used to frame houses. I did that for about eight and a half, nine years. And so I went to go work for this guy who built storage buildings. And when he built them, he didn't build them like I built houses. And he used to tell me all the time, we're not building a house. And so the way he put it together was to save on lumber and to make it more convenient for the way that he was building. So that's kind of what we're doing here. I could probably go get my level and put it on here, figure out what this angle is. But why? I got the post sitting right over here. So I'm just going to scribe it back there see what that angle is cut all the tails like that out there and then cut the exact same angle on the front because it should be the same then I'll be able to run my fascia across there and fascia across the back and we'll be good to go so that's what I'm gonna do next you guys hang tight all right I got my angle I'm gonna cut it on the front and the back whatever these rafters are that's how long they're gonna be and they hang over the front isn't that cool all right here we go all right you guys welcome back it is the next morning i finally got my roof system figured out and how i want to do it now as i stated before this is not a conventional way to frame things like my guy said who built sheds we're not building a house but i didn't want to show you how i'm going to do this layout over here so that it works out perfect so if you'll take a look over here i have this post sitting and it goes 79 and a quarter from this post over here and now with that being said, there was no way to lay this out on two foot center, 19 twos, 16 inch center. The reason I didn't want to do it on 16 because I would have had two floating rafters over there and I'm only trying to get away with one. That side will be supported by that post and the rest of these would be supported by this beam right here, but there'll be one in the middle that I was a little bit leery on how was that going to get supported and I thought I'll just let the one by do the support. So I also had an issue where I planned on taking this four by four post up higher a little bit higher and nailing my rafter on the side of it so there was no seam or anything over here just like I've done over here see this is what it'll look like from the outside you won't see the post but I didn't do that over here on this side I'm not exactly sure why I didn't I do that I just changed my mind without even telling myself I didn't tell myself I changed my mind we just did it and then I was like what'd you do so anyway that's the way it is now and so I'm gonna set that on there and I'll cover the seam over here I've come up with an idea it's gonna solve two problems the little corbels or the little arms that you usually see on these 45 things, I'm going to put those on the front to support this one, to support that one over there, and maybe one over there. But by doing that, it supports the whole rafter over there, and it covers up my seam up here. So I get a two for one on that. The only drawback is I got a weird layout over here. So from the outside over here, it's 26 and a half. From the outside over there, it's 26 and a half. And the space in between these is... 26 and a quarter. Now it's very symmetrical, but it's not exactly on layout. And like I said, this is going to get a metal roof. So we're going to be put runners across here anyway. This roof will be fully supported. I don't think it's going to go anywhere. The only way it's going to have to hold is the runners and the roof. And for that, I'm, I'm fine with that. So that's the plan going forward. I'm going to go ahead and get this thing laid out. I got all the rafters cut. I'm going to get them installed up here. See if I can get this one by on, get the siding on the wall. Kelly's here to help me today, so we should make pretty good progress. All right, you guys, hang tight, and I'll check back in with you. Holla. All right, so now we are going to change the what we were doing with our rafters. The customer wanted these to hang way out, and I tried to give it like a six-inch overhang, but Kelly's saying we needed more out front, so I moved that in, and we're going to have like around a three-inch overhang. The reason I think that's okay is because nobody's going to be hanging out over on the other side of this unless they're like need to use the bathroom at the party and they just get down the steps but we don't need to start that as a habit anyway I'm gonna figure out I cut these already by laying them up here and scribing them but I don't exactly know what the angle is so check this out here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna check the angle oh I did check that and it is five degrees you guys see it went to five degrees so since I know that I want to have this three inch overhang I have my three quarters of an inch which is going to be out there and then right there I'll just take that Move that to five degrees. Where's five? Right here. Okay. And then I'll make a mark. Now what's this mark for? I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this mark on all of them. When I go to set these rafters up on top of the wall, I'll pull the edge of the wall to my mark like that. And I'll know exactly where to screw these down in. Does that make sense? All right, that way they're perfectly straight all the way across. All right guys, that's the next step. I'll check back with you.
All right, team, so we got most of the raptors up. As you can see, we're missing one raptor right here, and that's because I don't have anything to hook it to on the front right here. But we talked about this. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and set this post right here. Now, this post, I'm going to let it run wild. That means I'm just going to let it run long. And then what I'm going to do is go ahead and cut the rafter the way it's supposed to be cut, nail it in the back back there, and then we'll be able to take our six-foot level and plane across these rafters that already exist and take this one and lift it up until it touches the level. And then we'll know when to mark our post and cut the post. And at that point, I'll go ahead and do that. All right, guys, that's the plan. Hang tight. <laughs> Well, apparently after looking around the job site, I don't have a 4x4 post long enough. So I figured this would be a good time to go ahead and put the siding on the back wall and then I can run out and lunch and get me another post. In order to make these things the same all the way up, I've made these two little jigs right here and I spaced mine out at 4 and 3 quarters of an inch. Now I can't do that with the bottom one because we're at the bottom here so I'm just going to have to measure up 4 and 3 quarters and then place my next one. Does that make sense? Okay, good. All right, you guys, I don't have a microphone plugged in right now. I'm charging up the phone, so um, hopefully you can hear me with the onboard. So I did get my post. Here it is. I already got it cut square at the bottom, so I'm going to set this thing up here like we talked about, and then I'm going to go ahead and set my level up on top, plane it out, mark it off, get it cut, and then put this last rafter up. You guys hang tight. Here we go, he does nothing. This guy's gonna help us tremendously. See that, how it's touching all three of those? So we need to touch this side. So here's how we're gonna do that. I'm gonna put this. Where it goes out here. And then bring this down until, you just need to be able to bring this up. So it touches the level right there. I like it. I'm moving it out the way, marking my post. Boom. All right, guys, that's where the post gets cut. I'm gonna mark it on both sides and then get it cut. I'm gonna put this rafter up. So I got my angle on the side. Okay team, so here's what's going on with this. These rafters, I tried to get as much of them, much out of them as I can, but even when I got them cut at um, 95 and a half inches, once I cap it with three quarter and three quarter, that's gonna be longer than eight foot. The metal we got is only at eight foot. So what I'm having to do is cut these things back with this much right here, which is really like an inch and five sixteenths, but I'm gonna be adding back on three quarters of an inch out to the front and three quarters out to the back. And that's gonna bring us right at 95 and three quarters. So you're gonna have like an eighth of metal showing at the front and an eighth in the back. That's the way I planned that. So that's what we're gonna do. Went ahead and marked this side and marked that side, but rather than mark every one of them, one hand drove now I'm just gonna snap a line and that way we know that this fascia across the front is gonna be super straight. And 
now all I have to do is come to my red mark and mark five degrees on every one of these. This one at 55 and a half. Can I throw a crown up? Guys, remember my crown up. All right, guys, so what I did was I measured from the end of that rafter to the dead center here, made a mark at 55, and then I measured from the end of my one by, made a mark at 55. That way, if you're ever in a situation where you're here by yourself, you can just line these two marks up and you'll know that you're flush on both ends. All right, going down, getting it started. Alright, so in order to get this super straight, I'm just going to snap a line here. Now we are a couple foot short, you can see out there, but that's okay. As long as I go out to the outside edge, I should be good to go. Oh yeah. Alright team, so it looks like I got the last of the boards that go up on top. It's nailed in, installed on the roof, and so now what I want to do is, I know you guys are not aware of this because you're not up there, but when you're up there the roof does kind of wobble and shake around. I've had that happen before, that's because you have to put the little corner braces in. Those really stabilize, especially if you have four pillars like that, that stabilizes when you put it on all four corners. Also it makes it look really cute and decorative. So I'm going to cut those right now, get those installed before I get up there and install the metal. Once those are installed I'll be able to get up there and knock it out. Alright, you guys hang tight, I'll check back. Holla. Well, it looks like we're either taking off early or we need it to stop raining. Man, it's supposed to be our last day. Okay team, so we are back. Now we tried to get done yesterday, but unfortunately the weather had other plans for us. So we had to get out of here because we were starting to get rain on. And then this morning we, was, we were planning on coming right back out, but it rained all morning, even worse than it did yesterday. So we had to hold off. Now we're back trying to get this thing knocked out today because I'm trying to go on vacation, but I'm not sure if that's gonna happen because it looks like it may rain again, but we'll just have to see. And all of our wood is wet, but it is what it is. However, I do have good news. I went ahead and bought another jigsaw. Now, I know you guys have seen me using the Bauer jigsaw in some of my other videos. It has been quite the struggle. Uh, and the reason we got that is because we were in an area that just didn't have a Lowe's or a Home Depot close enough to warrant going there. When we needed to get something done, there was a Harbor Freight right down the road. So we bought that and it was supposed to be temporary. It just ended up being my jigsaw because I barely use a jigsaw. But now I'm out here using it a lot and I wanted to get something that's nice. 
So I bought this. And I know this is a good one because I actually had this model at one time, but I, I wore it out. So it was time for a new one. So anyway, I don't mind DeWalt tools. Not mad at that product at all. Most of my stuff is DeWalt. So also I got these blades right here because it said fast and clean. I don't know what any of that mumbo jumbo in there means. There's reverse cut, there's down cut, there's clean cut, there's fast clean cut. There's, I just, I need it fast and I need it to be clean. So I bought these and we're gonna try it out. So here we go. I mean, I gotta cut some archers, so hopefully it'll work out. All right, let's get this thing plugged in, get our archers drawn up. I'll start cutting them, have Kelly do the round over and sanding them. And then we will stick them up on our little tiki bar over there so that it's stabilized while I'm up on top trying to install that metal roof. That's the plan. You guys hang tight. All right, so now what we gotta do is we have to draw these archers. Uh, I'm gonna just center them. That's the best way I know how to do that. And some of them are different sizes because I don't, th these things stick out the front, so they have to accommodate for that. But the rest of them just need to fit in the corners. And so that's what we're gonna do. I need to find something round or um, a string. And I'll check back with you guys. Hang tight. Okay team, so here's what I did. I couldn't find anything round that was big enough. I need a, like a real big circumference. That way I can go far out as possible without removing too much meat in the middle. Does that make sense? So if I use something small like that, that ain't gonna work. And then if I try to go too far out, I'll be too little in here. So this is what I come up with. I measure 9 and 15 16 from there to there. 9 and 15 16 from this end and when I swing it around it does land on my point so that's that's the radius that I'm going with all right so I'm gonna get that cut up that's gonna be the pattern for my first one and then um, once I get a bunch of them cut up Kelly will come in with the router and do the round over and get the sanding and then we'll get them installed you guys hang tight I'll check back in with you holla Bro, you better get faster than that. I think there's a speed thing in here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Much better. All right, let's figure this out. It literally took me about 45 seconds to go a half of an inch with that Bauer saw. And this thing, as you guys seen, blasted through there and made short work of it. So I'm very happy with my purchase on that. Thank you, DeWalt. We'll continue to use that. And we've got six more to go. All right, here we are. Okay guys, so here's what's about to happen next. Kelly's gonna come over and team up on these with me. I'm gonna go ahead and continue cutting these up and I don't think I only got like two more. She's gonna go ahead and start routing these so that they're ready to go when I get done here and I go ahead and get them installed. But if you guys have never used a router, I just wanted to show you right quick how we're going to be doing it. This router came from Amazon and it was fairly inexpensive. I've used it on lots of projects, so it definitely gets the job done. If you guys are interested, we'll leave a link for that in the description. But for now, I wanted to show you how you would run this thing. Just like you would read a book, left to right. That's how I've always been taught to do it. So also, you wanna make sure there's a dust port that's right here, Kelly. You wanna make sure that's pointing that way because you don't want it it's to be throwing dust all over you or all over your material. It's just always best to hold it that way because that's a good firm place. It has the rubber padding right there and it makes a good grip. It's for one-handed, so you can hold your material mm -hmm. and set it on. <clears throat> now here's the deal, you gotta make sure you're setting flat on your board 
okay? And the way I come into it, I'll show you before we even get started, let me slide it down here to make sure you can see, is I get it going and I'll just come into the material. You cannot go too far in. You can't? You can't because once it hits this little thing that rides along this, it stops cutting. It can only go as far as that little wheel will let you go. Once you push in and your wheel's touching down there, mm -hmm. it'll stop cutting. All right. So then you start going like this. Can you turn now, it on before you get on the wood? Mm -hmm, you get it going, spinning really fast. And you, if you are coming in right here and you have this little area that did, you didn't get, as long as you're f flat like this, you can you come, come backwards, backwards just to do it. Now, I like to do that myself is I'll go ahead and ride it all the way down like this and hit it like that. And then come back after I've done that and go and over it a couple times. it won't go deeper? No, it won't go deeper. That, you why? Have, I don't understand why look, it wouldn't go deeper. Look down here and you'll see. See the wheel riding on it? Yeah. The, it can't go any deeper than that wheel oh. touching down there. All right. Okay, and this is a round over bit. They come with all kinds of profiles that you could put on here. But for the most part, I use the round over. It's just a good clean, especially when you're doing something like a tiki bar. Tiki bars wouldn't have you know, all fancy scrolls and stuff like that. So that's what we're going to do right here. I'm going to do one across the pass right here to show you guys and then to show you how DIY friendly it is. Kelly's going to do the next one on the other side and if she knocks it out the park, we'll go ahead and let her do the rest of them while I cut those. All I right. just have a question. You're not just doing the arch, you're doing the whole bottom? Oh, that, I did want to just talk about that. These are going up there. This part is flat and I need it to be flat. So we will not be hitting anything back here. All we'll be hitting is from the front, around the arch, all the way down to that end. Mm. So try not to slip it and go around, which I, I don't know how you I thought we were only doing do the that. arch. I didn't know you were doing no, this no, part no. too. Here we go. Make sure you turn it off before you start putting your fingers over here. This isn't a blade and it will cut you. You do the so other side that. too? Yep, so you're going to do the other side. All right, here you go, Kelly. How do you turn it on? The little button that says, okay. there too I missed. Okay, well, I don't know if any of that did. Okay guys I want to take a second to talk to talk to you about one thing before we uh, turn Kelly loose on this because she did ask the question. She wanted to know why she wouldn't start in the middle and go backwards that way. The way the blade spins in there it'll grab the wood and it'll literally tear chunks of your wood out. A little, it'll be, they'll be like this long. So if it finds a good wood grain that it likes the way the blade is spinning it needs to go the other way first. Now you can go backwards, like I said, after on a little it. spot back here where you, because you came in right here. But after you run the whole thing down, then it's safe to go backwards just to, mm -hmm. you know, fine tune it. But you don't want to start this way and go that way. It could I chunk see. the wood out. Alright team, so I've got these cut the way I need them to get cut. I'm going to go ahead and drill some pilot holes in here so when I put my lag screws in, it's a whole lot easier to get through. should be pretty simple. Boom. Alright. Right. Those are so good looking, those GRKs. Ooh wee son. That's braced off right there. That's going nowhere. Love it. Moving on to the next one.
All right, so those are done. It's time to move on to the roof part. So I got to get those boards cut off on the top and then we're going to start putting some blocks in here. I remember we guys talked about putting our, our rafters. We kind of symmetrically set them so they weren't exactly on two foot so that may cause a problem with the seam is. However, I'm going to make sure it doesn't cause a problem because I have enough to overlap it good and I'm going to run some blocks this way to make sure I'm driving screws down through two by fours. I want this thing to be tight, holding on good. All right, guys, that's the plan. I'm about to get up on the roof. Holla. All right, you guys, it looks like we have come to the end of at least today, at least another day. And I believe Kelly says we have one more day in there, but I believe we are done about 99% with the bulk of what has to be done. Now, there's a couple little nitpick things like the end of this bar top over here needs to be rounded off like I did over there just because they don't want it, you know, catching you in the sides. Everything's been done on the inside. All the bracing's been put up. The metal roof is put on. I can't think of anything else we need to do, but I think Kelly has a couple things up her sleeve. But I'm gonna walk you through, guys, and let's just go take a look at our hard work and what we've been doing for the past three weeks. a vision at one time and now it is a reality. All right, you guys, it looks like that's gonna do it for this one. Now listen, these things, not only do they take quite a while just to build them, they also take quite a while to film the videos. We enjoy doing it. All we ask is you guys help us out by going down and destroying the like button. Hitting the like button sends our video out to other people and it definitely helps the channel grow and it also shows us that you appreciate what it is that we're doing so that we know what to continue putting out. And also, if this is your second or third time back to the channel, you may as well become part of the DIY family by subscribing to the channel and making sure that you ring the bell. Haki. All right, guys, I think that is definitely gonna do it for this one and I hope to see you on the next one. Until next time, take care and stay safe. Peace.